This is all changing now. It did swing that way to just white males, young white males. But it is changing now. People are aware that they have to have a good screenplay before they're going to have a good film. And the actors are getting a little older. There was a space there between television and movies. And we sort of picked out the younger group. But now, how about Sean Connery and Clint Eastwood and Liz Taylors, those in that age group? We are seeing more films come out, and they've got to be written by older people. And as far as the minorities are concerned, there's lots of scholarships now being awarded to minorities, as well as film contests that are uh, geared for just the minorities. The Writers Guild of America out here west just had a competitive uh, scholarship for just minorities. So that was really wonderful. We put a lot of our students in touch with that. So we have to have, we have to cover all the multicultural aspects. I think the Olympics are teaching us this. We are a world community now. So we are going to have to have all cultures in our screenplays and in our movies in a major way in my opinion. I say that, or I think that one of the main problems is in, in screenwriting is that you see the pretty girl who submits to the guy with the gun. And women are depicted in a light that is not true. I mean, how many women do you really know that are just the ornaments on the guy's arm? It's a very competitive industry for women. It is tough. You have to work five times as hard as any man in the industry to get half as far. And you have to be able to be tough and you have to not be emotional about it. You just have to work hard. And you have to persevere and there's a lot of people that cannot do that, men and women that cannot do that. And it's tough for, for all kinds of people, uh, blacks and, and Hispanics and all kinds of minorities. And I personally would like to see more things written for women that depict women as assertive and intelligent as we really are, um, exploring our emotions and what our processes are, what we really go through. I want to see women that think and feel and that are strong. They don't have to be hard-nosed women to be successful. And um, I think that this is so slowly changing in society and that we need to keep pushing towards that end. And it's tough, but it's something that has to be done. And there's a lot uh, more growth in that area. There's a lot more demand in that market. Lifetime, for example, uh, HBO, uh, they're doing a lot more female-oriented pieces. There are a lot more female stars now who have more say-so in the projects that they do. They don't take the exploitation films. They are only taking pieces that have strong female leads. They won't even consider the parts as the smart uh, bimbo on the, you know, the, the good-looking girl on the guy's arm. They just, they won't do that anymore. Um, a lot of actresses are heading up their own production companies. Meg Ryan, for example, Gina Davis, and they are simply developing material which they can star in because they're tired of being told by the predominantly male-run uh, old world boys club uh, that this is how they fit into it. Um, and they're saying, that's not how I fit into it. I'm going to make Thelma and Louise and I'm going to say how I feel. And a lot more of those things are happening. And actually, women's films gross box office uh, enormously uh, successful figures in comparison to all of the shoot 'em up violent films that are made. There aren't as many of them, but the ones that are made in comparison are much more successful in the long run. Um, video sales and television reruns and foreign box office, they do much better. It's um, something that we need to keep working at. It's something that needs to be done. I belong to Women in Film, an organization that works for the advancement of women in film. And it's a terrific organization that it's not just for women, it's for minorities, it's for anybody who believes that we need to set a positive statement out there about what women's roles are. And I think that it's changing ever so slowly and that the younger generations uh, will have the real opportunities to get out there and hear their, have their voice heard.
Hello, my name is Janet Blake. I'm Vice President of Writer Development and Special Projects for the Walt Disney uh, Network Television Department. Five years ago, we started a program at Disney called the Walt Disney Studios Fellowship Program, specifically to give ethnic minorities and women an opportunity uh, to be employed as writers in the industry. Basically, what we do is each year we have a nationwide search to find talented new writers. And if you call the studio, I'm sure they'll give you the hotline number uh, to call to find out how to apply. And it, it is important that you have, you have finished school and that you've completed a script which you can submit. And you can submit it either to the television division for consideration or to the feature division. We evaluate the scripts and then over the summer months we have a series of interviews and decide on how many people we'll bring in for a one-year uh, fellowship beginning in the fall. And during that time in the TV division, you learn how to write for TV, you meet producers, we have seminars, we send you to a class to learn dr dramatic structure. And in the feature division, you work one-on-one uh, -on -one with creative executives uh, developing a feature script. And in the past, uh, many of the writers, uh, especially in television, have gone on to, to great success. Uh, a number of them are already producers on network television shows. I encourage you to, uh, if you are interested in becoming a writer, to keep a daily journal, to write short stories, to read great literature, uh, go to plays, find things that fill you up and inspire you and find out the things that are important to you and, and figure out what your point of view is on a subject. All of those things will inform and help you as writers. Good luck to you. Every year, the Hollywood Scriptwriting Institute sponsors a week-long residency course in Hollywood, California. This year, at the reception, we were honored to have several noted professionals share their experience with us in an open forum. The bottom line is that you have to believe in yourself because a lot of times in this business there's a lot of rejection and uh, because at the time I had a dream and people were telling me, you know, I mean, family, friends, get out, don't do it, you don't have the talent, you don't, you know, I think that it's important that uh, you understand that that comes with the territory and don't take it personally. Like a lot of times somebody says, well, one person read my script and said it's horrible, it must be horrible. <laughs> And then it's like, let another person read because it's a thing of opinions. Everybody has an opinion in terms of a story, and then you find the audience, and you find the person that says, hey, I understand the point that you're writing from because I've lived it. If, uh, it's like my new show, because I'm a father now, I'm writing a situation about being a parent. Now, I couldn't have written this show, you know, five years ago when I didn't have kids. But now, there's another kind of insight. And I think sometimes when you're writing, just don't get discouraged and be careful who you share your dreams with. That's the only thing that I would say, you know, I mean, you know, from a writing point of view, because as the script goes out there, just be hard on yourself. Give it to people that you really respect. I mean, uh, one of the best things about my wife is that we love to disagree, and we have that option. So she can read something and say, Robert, you know, I don't know about that character there. And it makes you think, rather than having a yes person that says, it's all great, they just won't buy it, you know. <laughs> There's something to be said about having a, sound, a sounding board to double check the check. You know, I mean, because the bottom line is that I, I think if you really, I mean, every story has been told, it's really in the storytelling, and that's where Hollywood really needs writers, because there's not that many great, I watch old movies because they're the best written, you know, I mean, they're the best, you know, structured all the way down, and so I just think that it's important that uh, whoever you share your baby with, anytime I write a script, it's my baby, and you, want, you wouldn't want to give your kid to anybody. So in terms of what, what he was saying about uh, who you send it out to, uh, there's no way to protect. I mean, it happens every day in Hollywood, somebody steals an idea. The, the, the only thing that I would say is that hopefully your fountain, is, your well is so rich that if someone even takes a bit of the idea, they can't take you. You know what I'm saying? So you said, that was my one idea. I will never have anything again. You know? It's like, as writers, you know, it comes with the territory. Hopefully you'll find, you know, your experiences will be, you know, such that someone will read and be honest enough to say, I like your talent and we're in show business for life. So I want to make an investment in you. I mean, if something, you've had a bad experience, you know, just understand it's a part of the business side. Because what I sold was a TV movie, which actually was an assignment. 
and the question obviously is how do you get an assignment. Honestly, it's getting to an agent, and I wish there were agents here because that's really who you should be talking to as to how to get into them. It's hard to get past us. If you send me a script, I'm not going to read it. I have to send it back. The studio has a form letter. I can't even really hear your ideas. People call every day and they say, well, I want to pitch you an idea on the phone. Just fans, and we can't talk to them. Getting to the agent is the tough thing, and there's no easy way to do it. The Guild will give you a list, and the Guild will tell you who will meet with new writers. The problem is those that meet with new writers usually don't have a lot of established writers they can marry you to. And marrying is part of what we do in television. Um, I won't get into the specifics of that, but essentially be careful on who you go with because a bad agent is worse than no agent. That's, I learned that. I think a lot of writers have learned that. And two, just keep knocking on the doors. Go to where they are. If this was an agent meeting, I would be here if I was a writer without an agent because this is how you meet them. Well, I, I think the thing is, if you're at all discouraged, you can't be a writer. I mean, every single day that you turn something in that's written, in television particularly, is a day that you will be criticized and, and not complimented at all. I mean, people will pay you money, but they won't say it's good or thank you. They, they'll just start telling you what's wrong with it. So what you were saying is, is the most important. You have to like what you write, unquestionably. You have to believe in it, and you also have to keep writing. Uh, a few people will write a script, and that's what they'll try to run around with for really four or five years. I mean, you have to keep writing a new piece to show people. If you're not getting, if you're not getting any response to one, write another and another and another, because maybe it's the wrong piece at the wrong time with the wrong person, but you have to keep writing. You cannot stop writing ever because that's, that's pretty much everything it is. That's the job. That's what the real profession is. So if you're, if you're not having a response with one piece, do another and send it to the same agents. Maybe an agent will say, I really like this, but, which is usually what they'll say in the beginning. So you write a second and a third and a fourth and then you find people who you connect with, with your ideas, with the kind of person you are, with the kind of person they are. And it takes um, a couple years. And if you can make it through that process, that hazing really, then you can be a writer, a professional writer.